Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. It's Becky at South Mountain YMCA Camps. Welcome to our live for classes, our online programs. Um, we're going to be talking about fur bearers today. And I know it's a weird word. It's just one of the titles of our classes. It's just animals that have fur. And we're going to be talking about those types of animals. So we'll wait for a couple more people here. Um, to start watching and then we'll get started. So many of the animals that we're going to be talking about today are animals that you can find either maybe in your backyard, definitely here on the mountain, and some of them are just, you know, local to Pennsylvania. Um, not, I want to <laughs> emphasize that not all of these mountains can be found on South Mountain. <laughs> not all these animals can be found on South Mountain. So, okay, so we'll, we'll get started. So, if you watched my tracks and traces class, how we kind of did that was I would show you the, I'm going to show you the animal fur. Um, and I'm going to say maybe where you could see this animal, um, give you a couple of characteristics about the fur. And then you guys can go ahead and kind of guess at home what you think the animal is. So it's like a fun little guessing game and see how well you know your backyard or your PA native animals. Okay. So. We're gonna start off pretty easy here, um, I hope, maybe not. Um, and we're just gonna get into it. And once we guess the animal and know what the animal is, <clears throat> I'll give you guys a couple of fun facts about each animal um, that maybe you didn't know before. So, first animal is Papau, this guy right here. This little guy, little pet, little pet, he does. Now some of our, there he is, can you see it? He is very small. Here's my hand. Here is this. It's a very tiny little animal. Um, very smooth fur. It has very distinct stripes on it. I'm sure you can kind of guess right away what this is. Um, if you have a bird feeder or anything like that, you might see them hang out, but a lot of times they just stick close to the ground. Um, but they're very loud, so you might be able to guess what it is. And it is a, you got it, it's a chipmunk. Um, so. This is a little chippy. Um, now, I am going to preface this with all of these animals here um, that we have here. We've had these pelts or furs for a really long time. So some of them are in pretty good condition, but some of them are a little damaged like this guy. They don't last too long like that. So here you go. There's our chipmunk pelt, or he's a type of ground squirrel. Chipmunks are ground squirrels. Um, they're very, very cute, very, very adorable, but not the friendliest animal. A lot of people, I know growing up, I was like, I really want a chipmunk. I want to catch one um, and keep it as a pet, but they're not really the friendliest animal. Now they have this color coat just, you know, to blend in really, they look just like the leaves or the dirt or the ground that they're, you know, on, they burrow into the ground or into a tree. That's where they, um, sleep and stay during the winter that's where they hang out um they usually pack on the weight and they sleep through the cold months um now they usually have now this this pelt doesn't but they usually have a really fluffy tail and that tail is actually just like to distract their predators like things that are going to eat them they hope that they're going to go for the tail um, a lot quicker than they're going to go for the head. So the tail kind of is like a distraction method. They can swish it all around and everything. And it also communicates with, you know, their young that danger might be afoot. So if their tails are twitching there, they know that they got to be running. Um, now, chipmunks are pretty solitary. They don't really like to hang out in groups. Um, really, they spend most of their day just looking for food. Now they're omnivores. So that means they, they eat everything. They eat veggies, they eat uh, meat. Um, but usually these guys mostly eat berries, nuts, seeds, you know, acorns that they find on the ground, that type of stuff. Um, now they have really puffy cheeks that they stuff all that food into. Um, and they then they take it back to their little burrow, their little hole, and they hide it away in there for the winter or for later. One chipmunk in a year can like hide away and store up to eight pounds of food. Like look how, look how tiny these guys are. Like they only get to be about like three inches in length, but eight pounds of food in a year. That's, that's pretty cool. Okay, so that's our chipmunk. Let us move on. 
Oh, I did mention that they're very loud. Chipmunks, like, if you hear that chirping noise, that's them communicating usually with their young. They're very protective of their burrows. So, you know, they'll kind of face up with whatever creature is there because they'll make a lot of noise that, so they sound a lot bigger than they are. Now, next creature also is going to be pretty easy probably to guess. It has a very distinct coloring, and we'll talk about why in a second. But there it is. See it? Has a pretty a medium coat, nice and soft. Um, a very distinct white stripe down it, and and black. Um, I will tell you right now, this 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 pelt is is very old, but it still has a very distinct smell to it. Um, so I'm sure that you guys, the fur is actually really thick um, on this guy. They're very, it's very very thick fur. Um, and I think you guys have probably guessed it. It is a skunk. This is the type of skunk that we would see in our backyard here. We do have skunks on camp. I think we once had like, I can't remember what his name was. If you're an alum and you worked in 2017, we had a very friendly skunk that just kind of wandered around camp a lot. Um, but yeah, skunks. They are just kind of like chipmunks. They are omnivores. They're opportunistic feeders. Now, I'm going to say that a couple of times with our animals. Opportunistic feeders is if they see it, if they smell it, they will eat it. Um, they, you know, they basically, you know, they're just roaming around. And if they find something they eat, they'll eat it. They're not like chipmunks that will go stored away. Skunks just will eat on sight type thing. So you, that's why you, a lot of times, you might see them around your garbage can, that type of thing. So... Skunks are pretty. Now, I said I was going to say that I was going to talk about their pattern. Now, their pattern is a warning. Their pattern is a warning actually to other animals. A lot of animals hits, almost, know that this pattern um, means that this skunk is going to spray you or this animal is not pleasant to deal with. Um, so much so that, you know, skunks really, you know, unless there's not a lot of food around, big predators like coyote, foxes, those types of things aren't going to mess with the skunk because they don't want to get sprayed and they know that they will spray them. Now, skunks, like I said, they spray, they spray that kind of oily substance out of a scent gland that's right under their tail. Um, and what they do now, skunks around here, what they do is they'll kind of come up on you and they'll put their tail up in the air and that's their first warning and they'll twitch their tail around and they'll kind of jump, jump, jump back and back and forth. And then right before they spray you, they'll quickly turn around, spray you, and then look at you again because they don't want to take their eyes off of you. So much so that um, they don't want to take their eyes off of you that actually spotted skunks, which aren't really around here, but spotted skunks actually stand on their front legs. They do a little handstand and can spray doing that so they don't take their eyes off their target. Um, skunks around here, you won't really see them do that. They're, they're more the type just to quick turn around, spray you as they're running away. Um, skunks don't want to spray. Like, they'll use it. That's kind of their last defense. Um, and that's because it takes a little bit of time for that to work up again. Um, it takes uh, almost a week for that spray to uh, build up again in them. So then they're defenseless, basically. So spraying is really their last defense. They don't, they don't want to spray. They'd much rather run away. They only spray, really, if they feel cornered or really, really frightened. So... That's our little skunk friend. Um, yeah, I think that's all. Yeah, so skunks. I really think they're cute. Baby skunks are really cute. They stay with their moms. They kind of walk. They kind of follow them in a nice little line. Mama skunks are very territorial and very um, protective of their babies, so they will spray. But baby skunks don't have the ability to spray until they're um, close to a year old. So, yeah, so that is our skunk friend. Awesome. So next one, again, might be easy. We're getting harder, but not really. Um, so this is our next friend, okay? So notice it kind of has a gray type of color. I'm going to show you the face of this one. Has a little mask. And I'm going to show you the tail, which is a little bit striped. So kind of grayish brown body with a masked face and a striped tail. Hmm, what could it be? You probably see these guys hanging around your trash can, hanging around rivers. They really do like rivers. And you are correct, it is a raccoon. So, that is a raccoon. Oh, 
I got a question about skunks. How far can they spray? About 10 feet. Skunks can spray up to 10 feet away. So give them a wide berth. <laughs> but so our little raccoon here, um, again, opportunistic feeders, just like skunks, omnivores, just like skunks. They eat anything and everything. Um, they have incredibly good sense of smell. Um, I talked a little bit about in tracks and traces, how they have like, they can almost see with their hands. They don't have the best eyesight and they can almost see with their hands when they're feeling something. They kind of get a, a lot of information from touching things, which is really cool. Their fur is a little bit coarser feeling. Um, so it's not as soft. It actually has, you know, a, a bit of a coarser feel. And that's because of where they usually hang out, which is up in trees and things like that. That's just going to protect them from the, you know, the branches, the thorns and all that stuff. It also has a little bit of a oily texture, I almost want to say. And that's because these guys hang out around water. It's almost like they have a raincoat on. Um, uh, raccoons are excellent swimmers, really, really good swimmers. Now, when they're walking around, they kind of look weird. They kind of like lope around a little bit. They do a little um, mosey. But when they're swimming, they're super, super fast. And that they're usually hunting fish, um, crayfish, that type of stuff. But uh, yeah, so raccoons, super, super speedy. Raccoons are social. Um, they are pretty social creatures. Yeah, sometimes they're kind of by themselves a lot, but a lot of times, they, you might see more than one raccoon, and that's because the baby raccoons stay with the mama raccoon for a pretty long time. So you might see a whole little family of raccoons wandering around. Now, raccoons in the wild only live about one to three years. That's about it. But in captivity, when they're fed all the time, they don't have to worry about predators or cars or anything like that, they can live up to 10 years. So, um, sorry, not 10, 20 years. There are actually raccoons that in captivity that have lived 20 years. It's crazy it's absolutely crazy so there's a raccoon um i think raccoons are really awesome i know a lot of people have always wanted raccoons um for pets and everything they don't make the great greatest pets um talking to some people who have brought them in um rescued raccoons that you know can't go back out into the wild because maybe they're blind or something um they get into everything. That's what raccoons do. They explore, they smell, they reach into everything, they make a huge big mess. And in the wild, that's okay, but in your you know, bedroom, maybe not such a cool thing. But raccoons, super, super cool, super, super cute. Love the raccoons. Now, this next one's gonna be harder. Um, and that's because the color that it is, the, this pelt is, is not the natural color that we would see in our backyard. Okay, but I'm gonna kind of describe. So here it is. This is a natural color that they that this animal can occur in, but it's not the color that we would see here in Pennsylvania, okay? So, give you a couple hints. Very, very soft. Extremely soft. Um, it almost feels like the down of feathers. Um, it's very light. Um, this animal, you would see it's crepuscular, meaning it's most mostly active in the dawn and evening. Um, it eats... It's a uh, vegetarian or it's a uh, herbivore. So it only eats those veggies. Um, any animal though that eats meat probably eats this animal. Most definitely eats this animal. Um, and if you've guessed it, it is a rabbit. Okay, so this is a white rabbit right here. Um, I'm not really sure if this was bleached. It kind of looks like this, uh, this uh, pelt was bleached this color, but there are white rabbits. Um, in in captivity and things and also in the Arctic and stuff but this but rabbits usually for us you know they're a grayer color let me see here I actually have rabbits for us usually look about like this very cute very adorable very very soft all their fur is super super soft and that's just to keep them nice and warm nice warm cozy in their little burrows now fun facts um, a female rabbit is called a doe, a male rabbit is called a buck, and a baby rabbit is called a kit, and rabbits travel in herds. I know, crazy. It's not, it's, they're not cattle, but it's called a, it's, it's called a herd of rabbits, not a pack or a group or anything. And their little burrows are called warrens, okay? So that's where they live in warrens. And like I said, anything that basically eats a rabbit, um, or anything that eats like meat is usually eating a rabbit. If it's bigger than a rabbit, it's eating a rabbit. Um, rabbits are the main source of food for a lot of our carnivores, like foxes, um, coyotes, uh, 
you know, those types of animals, their population almost depends on if rabbits are in the area. Um, so if you have rabbits, you probably have those animals in your area too, even if you don't see them all the time. Um, if you have rabbits there, things that eat rabbits are probably also in your, um, in your area, okay? So rabbits, that's all I'm gonna say about rabbits. We're gonna move on to our next animal because we got a lot of pelts here, so I wanna get through them all. Okay, this one. So it's a grayish brown. Um, it kind of has, it's, it feels very much like the um, raccoon where it kind of has like a coarser type fur, but surprisingly soft underneath. And you see it kind of has like a short fur coat and then it has, let me see if I can get you guys to see this. And then it has like a spiky white fur coat that's a little bit coarser with longer hair. That's its little face. And usually it has a long, the reason why I don't have a tail for it is because its tail is naked. Okay, if that didn't give it away, then I don't know what will. Um, we've talked about this animal during our tracks classes. It is a possum, okay, or opossum. So um, we said that possum, you can, in the States, you can use possum or opossum interchangeably, but um, in places like Australia, possum and opossum mean two different types of animals. But possums, super cool awesome animals, very misunderstood animals, okay? Um, a lot of people think they're really dirty and gross, which isn't entirely true. Um, these animals eat ticks. Um, they, well, they eat everything. They're omnivores, but one of their main things is they eat ticks, like a lot of ticks, um, which is pretty awesome for us. They're not affected by limes or anything like that. So their body temperature is actually too low to have a lot of diseases, including rabies. So a lot of people think they see a possum, they automatically think, oh, rabies. Nope. Um, raccoons can get rabies, squirrels can get rabies, skunks can get rabies, but possums, they can't get rabies. Um, their body temperature is just too low. Now, you probably heard the term playing possum. And playing possum is literally these guys, um, play dead. They, they, when they sit, when they are stuck now, they only play dead usually when they feel very, very trapped or if they're very, very scared. And it's something that they can't help. It's not that their brain thinks, oh no, I'm in danger. I'm going to play dead. No, it's a physical instinct reaction. So if they are startled, they, their body automatically starts to play dead. They fall over, their respiratory rate um, slows down and they start to emit a smell, very similar to like a skunk. There's a scent gland right under their tail that starts to emit this smell that smells like rotting flesh. But people do say that they are actually, they are dying because they're, they're slowing their heart rate down. They're like, their body starts to kind of go through decomposition. So it's very, very cool, very, very odd um, and crazy that that's uh, how they defend themselves, but you know, they're not the fastest creatures um, in the world. They got shorter legs and they're usually kind of round, so they're not really fast. They're great climbers, but when they're on the ground, they're very, very vulnerable. Um, and like I said in our tracks class, um, that is why a lot of times they do get hit by cars is because they get startled by headlights and a car coming to them and that automatic instinct of playing dead they just freeze in the middle of the road. So that's uh, that's your possums, but very, very cool animals. Um, they don't have a very long lifespan, about three years in, um, probably shorter in the wild, but um, they only live about three years. Um, but that's why they have a lot, a lot of babies. Um, they have, and the babies actually cling to the mom's back and then the mom just kind of waddles around with all these like eight babies because they can have like eight to 12 babies at a time, just kind of waddling around with um, all these babies clinging to her back. And they have really strong claws that they can climb up um, and the babies just grip onto mom while they do that. And they are the only marsupial, so they do have a pouch. They're the only uh, marsupial here in North America. So they're just all around very cool animals um, that we just don't get to see very often because they're also very shy and very cautious and they don't, you know, like to hang out around people. Though they like people's trash, they'd rather not see any people. They're not, they're very, very scared of people. Okay, so we're getting through it. We got a couple more pelts here to go. Now, this, uh, these next two, I'm gonna show you guys two of them. 
Again, we kind of talked about these in my tracks and traces class. Check that out if you guys want to see what these the tracks of these animals look like. I'm going to show you two at a time, and you guys are probably going to get it right away then. So these are both the same animal, but different uh, subspecies of those animals. So this one, very long, very distinct red color with black tipped ears, long, long face, and the other one, Brown, still has a little bit of that red in it, or sorry, gray color, grayish brown, um, and then it has that reddish color, and again, long, long face. Both of these animals usually have really long tails, and uh, yeah, these are the foxes, right? So this is the red fox, you can see, let me back up here a little bit, you can see how long the red fox is, how, and then you can see in comparison that the uh, gray fox is smaller. Um, and that's, you know, just the type of species they are. Red foxes, um, those fun facts about those red fox. Now, usually these guys, you know, they're, they're not nocturnal, but they usually do prefer to go during the night a little bit more, but you might see them during the day. Um, you know, they're opportunistic hunters. They hunt when uh, they're hungry type thing. So you might see them in fields looking for a field mouse or something like that. Now the gray foxes, these are the guys that climb trees. They're also known as, known as the tree fox. Um, I actually have some pictures here for you guys. So here's our red fox. You can see, see how long their tail is. Their tail is actually usually like as long or twice as long as their body size. But this is um, an English gray fox, a uh, red fox. So this isn't the type, specifically the type that we see around here. This That's a very, very, um, it's a bigger one than we would usually see around here, but same idea. And then we have our gray fox, and that's a gray fox in the tree. And you can see why it's gray. He blends right into the tree trunk. And you see how he has like a little bit smaller face and everything, but still a really, really long tail. And that tail is to help him balance when he's up in those trees. So yeah, gray fox and red fox. Carnivores, both of them. Um, they both make those yipping yay, 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 noises when they're communicating with each other, but usually they're mostly solo creatures. Um, they don't hang around in packs or anything like that. Um, the babies stay with mom for maybe about a year, but then other than that, that's, that's about it. They, you know, they're, they're, they're lone creatures. Um, they're not pack animals. Okay. Awesome. So we're going to get into some animals now that you can find in Pennsylvania. Um, actually, yeah, you can find in Pennsylvania, but not specifically maybe here on the mountain. Um, and our next one looks very much like our foxes. I'll show you its face. Here's its face. But here is its pelt. Very, very large pelt. Very long pelt. Long, long tail. As comparison, here is our red fox. And here is this. He is very, very long. And he is our coyote. So we do have coyotes in Pennsylvania. Um, we don't have them in this neck of the woods. There's really not enough woods for them to hang around in. And farmers really don't like them. So if there is a, a coyote around a farm, you know, they're not going to last very long. But coyotes here are, you know, they, now they are also carnivores. Um, they eat meat. Um, they are opportunistic feeders in the way that they will, you know, if they fi find something to eat, they'll eat it. Um, you might see them out, out west. They've had problems with coyotes eating house pets and things like that. They don't really do that here. I mean, they would maybe if they found your cat, but really they're, they're mostly about the rabbits and the smaller animals. They'd eat a raccoon if they could find one. Um, they would eat small rodents too. Mice, rats, uh, chipmunks, uh, bunnies, definitely. So coyotes are also not pack animals, though they can travel in like smaller groups, maybe three or four. They aren't like wolves that are in huge, big packs. Um, they just, that's just not how they, they usually hunt alone and they usually eat alone. But yeah, coyotes, very, very cool. 
Um, they don't howl like wolves either. They, they do sound a lot more like foxes, um, but their voices are just a little bit deeper, not as yippy, I guess is the, be is the better way to say it. But they don't do those like long, you might hear like a, a, a short howls, but they don't do the long extended howls that you would hear wolves do. So yeah. Coyotes, you, you can find those in Pennsylvania, especially, you know, southern and um, northern Pennsylvania. They do hang out there. So, very cool. Now, this next animal is my favorite pelt. Um, it is very, very soft. This animal doesn't really, it's not really in Pennsylvania. It's it's a little bit of a trick. Um, it's in, uh, you can find it in the northeast. You can find it in other uh, eastern states and stuff, but not really in Pennsylvania. We just don't really have the right habitats for them. So here he is. Um, he is very round. Uh, he has a little bit of a face there. Can I see it? Very soft fur, but it also has that kind of, a little bit like more so than the raccoon. It has this almost oily feeling on the top. You can see as I pet, see how shiny it is? It's, see how shiny that is? Um, these guys hang out in water a lot. Um, that's why it has this shine and they usually have a very distinct paddle like tail and web feet. Yes, it is the beaver. Uh, so this is our beaver pelt. Uh, the reason why we do have a beaver pelt here is just, we can talk about the different types of fur that it has. It has this really smooth top because it is like a raincoat. It keep it's waterproofing. Um, they have this oil that, you know, comes out of them, secretes out of them that they kind of rub all over them and it helps them become waterproof so that when they're swimming that under part of their coat, which is really, really soft, which is why a lot of trappers, um, and early settlers saw the beaver and they're like, and they caught them and killed them to, for their fur because their fur and they made coats out of them because they were waterproof. Before we had waterproofing coats, this is how people stayed dry um, in those wetter months. So yeah, so beavers, very cool. They are the second largest rodents, um, after the, what's it called? The capybara. Um, so they do, they do have those long teeth like rodents do. They have to chew on wood. It's not because they're eating the wood necessarily, but it is so that they keep those teeth down. Um, they have to do that or their teeth will grow too long so that they can't open their mouths. So you don't really see beavers um, much. They are usually, they're not nocturnal, but a lot of times they do um, come on land at night. Um, they are not great at being on land. They don't move very fast, but to get the trees and stuff they need to build their dams and their homes, they do need to go on land. So they usually do that in the evening time or early, early morning or at night. Um, that's when they'll be chewing away and then they can be in the water during the day when, where they're faster and when they can catch their food and everything. So that's, a that's our friend, the, the beaver. Very, very cool. Awesome. So we got time for one more. Um, it's going to be, it's the big one and that probably gave it away right there. So this isn't the big part of it, but this is a piece of it. Um, so really long hair. It's black. Um, these guys, again, not found on camp, but definitely found in Pennsylvania. Um, so long, bushy hair, not very soft feeling. It's not very soft, but very smooth, but not soft hair. It's more coarse. Um, and these guys are usually very, very large. Um, if you guessed it, it is a bear. And actually, we have a full bear skin here at camp. that was donated by one of our alum staff. It's massive. It's very, very big. Okay, this bear was probably about 400 pounds, 350. Um, very, very big head, but small ears. Um, bears now, they eat everything. They are omnivores um, here in Pennsylvania. Usually they eat a lot of berries, a lot of small animals that they can find, um, bugs and grubs. They'll rip up uh, stumps and everything and pull up moss and find a lot of grubs there and eat that. And they eat all the time. Mostly they're eating all the time to prepare for winter. Bears don't, um, they don't hibernate, hibernate here in Pennsylvania. They don't really need to, but they do slow down um, their body a little bit 
and they sleep a lot and they store all that fat for when they're when there's just really not that much food around so bears are they they're very fast um for short periods of time they can run up to like 30 miles 35 miles per hour um so running from a bear if you do see a bear in the wild you're not supposed to really run from it um black bears are very very scared of people um they are usually by the time you see a black bear it's already running from you um but if you do see a bear and you know you start you both are startled from it you freeze and you slowly start walking away uh, black bears are known to false charge, especially if maybe it's a mama bear and she has babies nearby. She might do like some false charges. She doesn't want to engage. Again, they don't want to engage, though they do have these like really sharp claws. These claws aren't for like attacking people. They're for climbing. They're very, very good climbers. Um, so if you see a yearling bear or a bear that's like about a year old, they'll most likely climb a tree to get away from you. Um, but... If you do see a bear, you know, you all walk slowly away. If the bear's not, is too interested in you, maybe it smells food, they have very, very good senses of smell, um, then you just wanna get big and loud. Wave your hands in the air, start shouting at it, and it will back down and be like, whoa, whoa, don't wanna mess with this person, super crazy. Um, they're, they're, they're big fraidy cats. And the only exception to that is if it's a mother bear. If it's a mama bear and you come between her and her cubs, yeah, she'll get, pre she'll get pretty aggressive, but that's just why you just want to walk away slowly and just like, you know, make sure that you keep an eye out to see where she's going. And if you need to make those big loud noises to scare them away, you can do that. But yeah, bears, super, super cool. Um, you can see bears in that they live in forests, just like we have here on camp, but we don't have bears here on camp. That's a lot of times we get that question. Do you have bears on camp? The answer is no. Um, because though camp, the forests at camp, are ideal for bears the surrounding farmlands are not so our little island of forests here aren't really great for bears because there's just not enough to support them here because then the rest of its farmland and bears don't really hang out in farmlands it's way too open of a space it's not the food that they want so you'll see them more in um, thicker forests larger forests that's where you're gonna see bears hanging out okay so that's all the time I have for today and I got through most of the pelts um, if you guys like watch this later and you guys have questions, please leave a comment. Let us know what um, your questions are um, and I'd be happy to answer them. I was zooming through a lot of them. Or if anything, you want to share uh, an animal story. If you have like a really cool animal, maybe a really cool bear sighting story. The first time you saw a bear, uh, the first time you saw a, a beaver or something, share it. We'd love to hear it. Uh, we'd love so make a comment below and let us know. Um, or let us know what your favorite animal is. If any of these animals are your favorite animal or what your favorite animal that you see in your backyard is. So we'd love to hear that. Um, join us again tomorrow um, and the rest of the week. I'll be back on Thursday to do some upcycle bird feeders <laughs> and uh, we'll be making some bird feeders out of some recyclable material. So yeah, great. Thanks for joining guys. Uh, we'll see you later. Bye.